Good morning, everybody. Are you excited to be here at the Library of Congress? We are so excited to welcome you all to the nation's library. It's so good to see you all in the audience. It's been two years since we had kids right here at the library in the Coolidge Auditorium. So give yourselves a round of applause. You're amazing. So my name is Sasha Dowdy, and I'll just give the intro, but the program is not about me. I'll tell you all about our presenters today. I work in the library Center for Learning, Literacy, and Engagement, so we get to do programs like this. It's the best. I'm, ex <laughs> I'm excited to introduce today's program, Joy Jumps from the Page, which is the 12th annual event supported by the Jonas Salkoff Eskin Memorial Fund of the Library of Congress. The fund was established to honor the late son of Marcia and Barnett Eskin, Jonah. There he is right here. And uh, he's no longer with us, but the family supports this program that builds compassion and understanding and bringing us closer together across our differences. So how about we say thank you to the Eskin family. So today we want to celebrate joy because we deserve it and also because we want to celebrate the library's collections. We have 176 million items and counting, and millions of them are art, like drawings, photography, and more. What you're seeing on the screen is Jerry Pinckney, an amazing children's book illustrator, and he did this art for National Book Festival. We also have photographs of things like this mural, and remember there's skateboarders skateboarding, because that'll be important later. Our next photo, another one in the collection, is some boys playing basketball, and we wanted to highlight it because of this graffiti, so beautiful, in New Jersey. And we also have these photographs from 90s, 2000s, and now. And of course, we have classic children's books. So there is the Humpty Dumpty from 110 years ago, actually more than that. I know. And we also have that poster of Hansel and Gretel play from 1938. Yeah, so those all connect. <laughs> those all connect to the program today, and maybe you can think about these connections later. But let's get into our special guests. Our first one is Josh Funk. He's a software engineer and author of books like The Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast series, um, the How to Code with Pearl and Pascal series, Dear Dragon, and more. Josh grew up in New England and studied computer science in school. Today, he still lives in New England, and when not writing Java code or Python scripts, he drinks Java coffee and writes manuscripts. Our next guest is going to be Frank Morrison. He is an artist who uses watercolor and acrylics. He was born in Massachusetts and then moved to New Jersey. He grew up during the early days of rap music, graffiti, and break dancing, and he was a well-known graffiti artist and an accomplished break dancer who was part of the Sugar Hill Gang's dance entourage. Any fans for Sugar Hill Gang? <laughs> Amazing. Frank's work today is in Mary Gal many galleries all across the country, and he's the recipient of the Coretta Scott King Award for Respect by Carol Boston Weatherford. He now lives in Georgia with his wife, three sons, and a daughter. So exciting. But it's almost time for me to go off stage and get started on the really awesome stuff you're here for. So I'm going to turn over this introduction to two amazing people. Parker and Jessica Curry are authors who are New York Times bestselling authors, and they both were nominated for NAACP Image Award. They, yes, Parker is a seven-year-old. She's a dynamic young mind with a love for ballet, reading, and spreading joy wherever she goes. Currently, Parker's in first grade, where she loves to explore art, new books, and making new friends. She lives with her family and loves being a big sister. And her mom, Jessica Curry, is a proud native Washingtonian a mom favorite blogger and a stay-at-home mama to three kids, Parker, Ava, and Cash. 
Jessica's blog, Happy Mama, Happy Baby, Happy Babies, is an authentic motherhood and lifestyle platform that shares her family's adventures, growth chronicles, and everything in between. So please, help me welcome on stage Parker and Jessica Curry. Good morning. I'm Jessica. Good morning. I'm Jessica Curry. And I'm Parker Curry. I'm seven years old and I'm an author. I write books together with my mom. Our journey as authors started a few years ago here in Washington, D.C. at the National Portrait Gallery. I saw a portrait of First Lady Michelle Obama. I thought it was beautiful. I couldn't stop looking at it. Another museum goer took a picture of Parker admiring Michelle Obama's portrait. And that picture was everywhere before we knew it. Parker's awe of Mrs. Obama's portrait inspired people. We, we got to meet Mrs. Obama, I, and I even got to dance with her. She is now my friend. We <laughs> We turned that story into a book for kids, and we've written other books since. When special things happen to you, we encourage you to write them down and or draw pictures to capture the moment. You can keep them to yourself, or you can share them with others. Always remember, your stories are so important, and you never know how they may bring joy to yourself or to others. We're so happy to celebrate the joy of storytelling and sharing here at the Library of Congress, the home of our nation's creativity. There are two special guests here today to talk to you about the joy that comes from writing and illustrating books for kids. Please welcome my new friends, Josh Funk and Frank Morrison. Thanks so much, uh, Parker and Jessica. Thank you. How's it going, Frank? Hey, what's up, man? How you doing, Josh? I'm doing all right. That's good. That's so um, we're here to talk about art and right? drawing yeah. and joy. And wow, I actually didn't see that. Very yeah, cool. Little, so yeah. did you did you always draw from when you were a kid? You know, I get this question all the time. I don't remember not drawing. Um, I do remember stories about my parents telling me, my mom would tell me I would draw on the walls as a kid. I was, um, you know, I don't know what age that probably was, maybe four or five. So I've always had a pencil or pen in my hand. So when, when you would draw on the walls, what would you draw? Um, in the beginning, it was a lot of scribbles. Anybody know what scribbles are? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I used to rock some scribbles. I was really good at scribbles. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Did, did, you, um, did you draw with like markers, crayons, paint? Like, oh, and what, what, what was your preferred medium? or Whatever I could find. I think after a while, my parents started putting the stuff up. So if I could climb to the cabinet, it would have the pens in it. Then I would grab the pens, and I would draw from them. So the do they like the, the wall drawings? Really? I don't think so. No? <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have any of those? Did they, they paint over them? I'm or? pretty sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So yeah. when, when you – were you – always interested in becoming an artist throughout your whole life? No, no. Really? I wanted to be a basketball player until I got on a basketball court. Really? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, what, uh, yeah. I wanted to be a pitcher for the Boston Red Sox. Get out of here. Yeah. See? So, See? Yeah, I yeah. don't love the Yankees, yeah. Now, but yeah. it's okay. Yeah. But um, I think you needed skills for that, and I didn't have those skills that I needed to, to actually play like the height? basketball. Yeah, that, yeah, thank you. The height. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, so so you you wanted to play basketball, uh -huh. but uh, but I I think you ended up drawing as a kid. Yeah. Did you draw in elementary school? Oh, did you gosh. draw? Did you remember art classes? Anything you drew as a kid? Yeah. You know what we used to do? I grew up in um, New Jersey, right? And so we uh, I used, when we went to Kanakamak, I went to Kanakamak, and that was my middle school, and it was the coolest 
Um, it was around Halloween time, and everyone had to design their door. And that's when you find out if you're a good artist or not, because you have to nominate a lead designer. This is back in like the seventh grade. So you're like, oh gosh, you're the, I'm the lead designer on the, on the door. And like the, actually, class, the classroom door. The classroom door, you had to yeah, draw yeah. on the door. So I actually, my door actually won first place, but I drew dragons, I drew uh, Dracula, Frankenstein. Anybody know those guys? Yeah. Y'all know, know what I'm talking about? Okay, okay, there we go. And Wait, so I used Dracula, to draw those. I don't know oh, Dracula. Dracula, you don't know him? No. You don't know him? He's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we had to draw those kind of things. And that was like cool. And that's when I realized that my talent could actually impress people other than my friends. That's pretty cool. I, so I was never, I didn't practice my art as much as uh -huh. I, I wish I did. Yeah. Um, I, I always liked to write, mm -hmm. but I didn't actually start writing books until I was 32 years old. Wow. I know, it's pretty, pretty yeah. old, right? Uh -huh. um, when, when, I was, when I was 32 uh, is when I started writing, but I, I always liked to write as a kid, mm -hmm. um, but I wish I practiced my art when I was in, are there any third graders here? Second graders, fourth graders, yeah. yeah. Oh, fourth graders. There we go. Sorry. Um, so, so I, I keep practicing your art because you know you never know if someday it'll be your job to draw dragons because you know that is that is a job that people like Frank have. So, um, what what is some of the other than this? Uh, what was some of the first stories you remember drawing? Someone just, oh, wow. I would draw from comic books all the time. Yeah? yeah. What comics did you like? Um, believe it or not, I would draw from, believe, hold on one second. My favorite character back in the day, and I'll just tell you how old I am. My favorite character was basically Garfield. I don't know oh, if I love Garfield. Garfield. Yeah. I was like, once, once I had him down pat and that the lasagna, and, you know, I was good money then. I was good. Yeah. So he was yeah. the first one on the Sunday. Comics. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I grew up in Boston. So on yeah. the Boston Globe, it was, it was Garfield and then Calvin and Hobbes was second. Yeah. And I think Calvin and Hobbes was probably oh, my favorite. Was Calvin. Yeah. 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 I love the Calvin and Hobbes. I believe, was it yesterday? Was was a Cartoonist's Day. Really? So, yeah. So everyone go and hug a cartoonist if you can. Oh, great. Um, great. But so you like Garfield? So uh -huh. you, you remember like drawing your own Garfield comics? Well, see, I used to draw from my comics was basically coming to Sunday paper. So we would get the black and white comics um, that would come through during the week on right. the newspaper. But so on wait, Sunday, do, you, do you know what a newspaper is? <laughs> is <that laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> Okay, so go yeah. on. <laughs> and so, so we would, we would call them the funny pages back then, the funny pages. And so I would just draw from the funny pages. I would just pull them and you can keep it and, you know, yeah, yeah. draw from it and all that. Yeah. So yeah. Did, you, did you make up your own stories with them, with, mm, with Garfield? Yeah, I just, just sometimes I would make my own stories up. But yeah. I, used to, I, used to I was creative, so I used to make things like I used to build. We had wire men. And so we used to, when we would watch Star Wars, and, you know, I would just build, we'd take a vacuum cleaner that we'd have. My grandmother was fortunate enough to have a junkyard behind her house. I don't know what it was. We just had that. People would, so we'd go back there, and we'd find toys, and we'd turn them into other things. And so we'd have wiremen and that kind of stuff. So you built models. So you're yeah. not just drawing. Oh, we'd make our own. build things yeah. and sculpt things. Oh, yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So... Um, so out, so that was when you were a kid. Uh huh. Um, uh -huh. And did you end up going to school to study art at oh, any point? Well, I went. I went to Rutgers. I did a little course at Rutgers. Yeah. Go and Rutgers. Was, yeah, All Rutgers. Right. Go Rutgers. All right, Jersey. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh -huh. So so you you study art and uh, and then then you became a fine artist. Is that right? Is that, yeah. is that what it's called? I yeah. guess it is. Yeah. So you I, had galleries mm -hmm, and. Mm -hmm. But I also remember reading that you were into graffiti. Oh, yes. Back in the 80s, I think everyone pretty much had a, a hip-hop talent. So you either, um, anybody know what breakdancing is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the pillars, the pillars of hip-hop is rapping. So I could rap. I had a rap back in the day. My brother, I used to take my brother's raps back in the day. Do you remember any of them? Would oh, you, you want to get it? You want to get, get one? You want to perform? Y'all want one? No! <laughs> No, my rapid days are done with. I could get one one. Here it is, here. You ready? It was prophesized way back in time. A crew would evolve and blow your mind. They would come, take over the earth. Blow away each crew with diff just one verse. That's it. That's all I had. That's all I had. That's all I had. That was it. But that's because my brother wouldn't let me hear the rest of the rap. So that's all I could steal from him, okay. and that was it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
But, um, but I, you know, you grew up doing, you know, in the times of the 80s, it wasn't, kids didn't have as much as they had, have now to stay inside and, and be creative. Actually, we had to be outside at probably like 10 o'clock in the summertime. So you're saying you did in. not have an iPad in the oh, 80s? Oh, it was no uh, iPad. It was, okay. a, was a tree. A tree house was an iPad. That's what we had. So we just created things back then. So we were, I think we, we lived like, I guess, similar... How, similar to like Little Rascals, I guess that's how oh, we grew up, like okay. playing outside. Yeah. All right. So, um, so when you were a kid, uh -huh. uh, you you liked to draw. Did your friends like to draw with you? Did they care about art as much as you, or were you like always the art kid? Because I think everybody has some art in them, even yeah. if they even if they don't know it. Well, there was one kid. There was one kid that drew, and he taught me letters. Like the graffiti letters, it was bubble letters and okay. stuff like that. And we used to put like um, Disney uh, characters around it. Like we okay. put a Smurf around it or a Ski Man back in those days. So he he kind of taught me the letter structure. Um, but there was he was about the only artist I knew. He's the only really? artist I knew back then. And so then when you got older, you how did you get into making books for children? Books. Yeah. I um, yeah I I went I was a fine artist, and so some of the things I did I was with Essence for ten years. Essence What's, magazine. What, okay. We did um we did lithographs. So I we had prints everywhere. If you go to art galleries, you see my prints. I have over like I have a ridiculous amount of prints in the market. And so one day I had a couple of artists that came through, um, and I saw that they were amazing, and um, they left and went into the picture book field. And I was like, get out of here. And so when I was when I had my children, I was married at the time. I was reading their books, and I said, you know what? I think I could try this. And so I said. I'll be right back. I told my wife, I'll be right back. We'll go get a book deal. Do I think that worked? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> then you find out what rejection letters are. Yeah. And you get one after the other after the other. And so I got, I got rejected from pretty much every publisher. And then one day, I was looking in the mail. And I got a letter from... This is, this is the mail, like the envelope. The mail, yeah. Not an email, the mail. Right. And I got okay. a, a message from Farber, Strauss, and Jerusalem. And they wanted to publish one of my books. And I was, I, they wanted me to work on a book for them. And that was um, Jazzy Miss Mozetta. And I won, I won a Coretta Scott King Award, my first picture book. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Thank you. And, <laughs> and now you've illustrated how many books? Oh, I'm over 50. Over, over 50. 50 books. Wow. Yeah, over 50 books. And that's yeah. in, you yeah. know, a decade and a half, two decades? That not, was it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's I started in 2004. So yeah. that's like three or four books a year, it sounds like. Yeah. And, and yeah. you do all of this by hand, right? Yeah. Not, yes. not digital. Yes. You don't work on the iPads. No, I don't work on the iPads. Wow. You know, I just found out I could do edits on the iPads and make it a little easier. So I started doing my edits, my editing on there. Oh, yeah. Very good. So yeah. on my sketches. <laughs> I, uh -huh. I also got some rejections. Most of mine were, I didn't start until around 2011. Mm -hmm. So a little after you started writing. So I, I was reading a lot of amazing books, including some of yours, to uh -huh. my kids really? uh, when they were little. Uh -huh. And when they were little, I was reading to them, and I thought, these books are amazing. I want to try to write my own stories. Mm. And I tried, but it was not easy. Um, it was pretty hard. I, my first story was really, really terrible. Oh. And um, <laughs> after um, I... I, I wrote a second story and it was a little better. I wrote a third story and they, it, was, it was even better. The fourth story was worse, but then the fifth one got better again. Mm -hmm. And eventually I got to the point where some of my writing was, was okay and I had interest from a publisher, mm -hmm. just took one, okay. one publisher, uh -huh. to turn one of my stories into a it's book. A mm -hmm. And uh, that was Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast. Nice. And so now that book, uh, was my very first book. It came out seven years ago, six and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. But um, I got about 150 rejections <laughs> beforehand. <laughs> but you know what, though? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know what? It only takes one yes. It, one it only yes. takes one yes yeah. to make a book. Yeah. And so now I did not draw the pictures in, in Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast. Uh, it was illustrated by a man named Brendan Kearney. You want to know what? Mm hmm I have not met Brendan Kearney. I've spoken more with you, Frank, really? than I have with Brendan Kearney. He lives in England. Uh -huh. um, we've never been in the same room together, as yeah. far as I know. Uh -huh. uh, and he, uh, he illustrated this book, but he did an amazing, amazing job 
taking the words that I thought of, I thought of just, I gave him the names, Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast. And he took those words and he, he created amazing characters just from those words yeah. that I couldn't have even imagined. He gave them a strawberry hat and a chocolate mustache and yeah. whipped cream for wow. hair and, wow. and a cherry on top. What is it like taking words from an author and turn, creating illustrations? Because when I see illustrations by an illustrator mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. first time, that is one of the most magical moments about being a writer. Yeah. Uh, what, what is it like when, when you see the words by, uh -huh. by somebody else and, and, yes. and how do you turn that into pictures? Wow, it's, it's you, you know what, I think it's similar to if, you're, if your parents are reading you a bedtime story. And you're, you're up, you have the cup of milk on the side of you, the cookies, and you're sitting there imagining what these images look like in your head. If they're reading, like, let's say, Peter Pan or something, I don't know. Just something out of the blue, you're just reading, you can imagine it. This is before, like, you had movies that would animate or, you know, all this other stuff. And you're just sitting there trying to figure out what does this look like? What does this time look like? So if you're saying French toast man with this and that, you're just sitting there and you're trying to figure that out. But it's, it's fun because when I illustrate, I try to figure what the setting is. So I tell you, all you art teachers or art students, you have to draw everything. Believe it or not, if you draw a cup, you draw a, a, a door, all these things are important, especially when you illustrate because sometimes the setting might be in a room, sometimes it might be a room like this. Um, so you have to pretty much know how to draw everything, in a sense. So, so you just build it up. The, the great thing is this: when people, when you get your edits back, and the editor is telling you, the editor is telling you, oh, they love the work, you know. But most of the time, you have to do changes and stuff like that. So, yeah. do you do a, a first draft mm -hmm. of the art? You don't just draw it once, paint it, and it's done. No, is, it, is, is that right? You draw, you draw your first draft, even for my book. I had to draw a couple of versions we'll, we'll, of my we'll, book. We'll get yeah, there. We'll get yeah. there. So you have to draw it first, then you do a thumbnail, and a thumbnail takes maybe about two or three minutes. What is it? What's a thumbnail? It's just a quick sketch. So like, quick like sketch. a small version. Yeah, scar, of, small version. The size of a thumb. Yeah. Is it, is it about, really that small? It, <laughs> it can be, but it's um. You just do a little layout. Okay. And then you put all your sketches together, and it gives you a theme of the story. Yeah. So, um, now you, adjust published your first book that you wrote mm -hmm. in addition to illustrated. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what was that process like? Oh, Writing man. the words and drawing the pictures. Writing the words and drawing the pictures. I mean, I couldn't really tell the difference between the two, to be honest with you, because the story was something I lived. So my kids skateboard. Well, tell us. What, what is the book? Tell us about it's the book. The book is titled Kick Push, right? And it's about skateboarding, a little boy that his name is Epic, his nickname is Epic, and he moves to a new neighborhood, and he has no friends at skateboard. So it's about really finding yourself and being happy with who you are. And, uh, and so, but the thing is, I, my kids skate all the time, and so you kind of, you know, I'm used to being the skate dad. You drop them off here and there, and I know what it feels like for them to be in a neighborhood where kids didn't skate. So it's kind of ring true to my life, so it wasn't that hard. Do you skate? Do I? Uh, the story is not a good one. <laughs> well, I, I read the beginning of, the, the, of beginning? the book. Yeah. yeah. I, well, yeah. I mean, I've read the whole book. It's not a good story. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. But, yeah. but you know what? Uh -huh. With more practice, just like I, someday maybe I will practice my art more and I will yeah. illustrate my own books. Someday uh -huh. maybe you will be a world class skateboarder. Oh, it just takes more practice. You're right. right. You're right. It's, it's, it's possible. Well, my life insurance would have to go up. But yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> yeah, someday maybe I'll be teaching ballet. I still don't know what I want to uh -huh. do when I grow ballet? up. Ballet? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my day job, <laughs> I am actually a software engineer. That's my day job is, uh -huh. I, is I write code uh, during the day. Wow. And, uh -huh. um, and on the evenings and weekends, that is when I write the words for picture books. The mm -hmm. evenings, weekends, coffee breaks, mm -hmm. lunch breaks, bathroom breaks, whenever I can find the time. Yeah. So that's, that's when, I, when I write. But, um, you know, I've, I'm not, like, just like you're not just a children's book writer mm -hmm. and illustrator. You also do fine art. You also, I've heard you dance. You like to dance. Oh, yeah, I can still dance. Yeah? yeah still dance. Oh, not today. Not, not today? today. Okay. No, we're, we're mic'd up. We okay, can't got, it, today. got it, got it. It's not going to happen. Um, yeah, it's not so, happen. you know, uh -huh. but you can be a dancer and an artist. You can be a scientist mm -hmm. and you can do reading and writing. In fact, I always tell people that if you want to be a scientist, does anybody like science? Any scientists out there? Oh, I do. So oh, if, yeah. if you want to be a scientist, it's actually very important that you are a good reader and mm -hmm. a good writer because yeah. 
if you're, if you're going to do experiments and study things, you will need to read all of the research that came before you mm -hmm. to try to learn everything that will help you figure out how to, I don't know, make the internet faster or yeah. save the earth. Um, and, and so when you do those experiments, mm -hmm. you're going to need to write about them. You're mm -hmm. going to need to be able to explain to people that what you learned so that they can then build upon that and learn more. And you know what? Sometimes you even need to be a good artist because it's not just words that you're going to have to tell people. You might have to draw diagrams yeah. and yeah. you might have to have charts and graphs and things like that. And that, that's a lot of art. Yeah. A lot of, there's an art involved to explaining not only what you've learned, but, but telling any story. Like you were saying mm -hmm. in, in your story, there's not really a line between the words and the pictures. It mm -hmm. all tells the story together. What mm -hmm. came first for your story? Was it the words, the pictures? Mm -hmm. how, how did it come together? Well, the experience came first. I went down a hill and um, on a skateboard as fast as I could, realized I had sandals on and realized I was in a um, neighborhood that was um, under construction. And then I had to realize that my sons and daughters were at the top of the hill and the laughter that I heard wasn't in my mind. It was them laughing at me going down this hill as fast as possible and literally trying to figure out I'm going to jump off the board or stay on the board. And so I jumped off, rolled down the hill, and my wonderful children came down there and started laughing. And so I said, <laughs> but they did, well, they did one thing. They picked up the skateboard and they started skating and they became professional skateboarders. And I was like, wow, but no one else around them skated and they influenced a lot of kids around the neighborhood to skate. And so they had everyone come into our house, all nationalized. It was like weird, they would, just, they would call it couch, sur couch surfing. So you'd have kids from all over the planet. Was, I swear, in my house, everywhere, yeah. So I, I have one question, mm -hmm. uh, did they, have a phone to record that video of you? Is it on YouTube? Can we look it up? <laughs> Thank no. goodness. Thank goodness it didn't Oh, happen. it's not. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, we can't relive that with you. No. But no. we can relive it in your book. Oh, yes. So, yes. yeah. And yeah, um, I tell that story yeah. every week now. Go ahead. So, uh -huh. yeah. No, that's, that's great. Um, now, I guess, what, what is maybe some, any advice you have for aspiring authors and illustrators out there? Authors and illustrators, I would say just draw and draw. Draw what you love. Draw what you love to draw. Draw, I don't, you know, just enjoy it. And then I would say challenge yourself. I would say challenge yourself to draw, like, um, characters, um, other people's characters. If you want to be an animator, like, you're going to basically draw other people's characters anyway. So if you're going to draw, like, um, if you're going to work for, let's say, an uh, animation company, you're going to redraw that same, like, I love Doug growing up. So you're going to redraw that Doug cartoon all the time. So it's better, it's best to know all the styles and um, if you, if you want to be an artist. Mm -hmm. so, so you're saying learn other people's art, mm -hmm. like, practice by John. I see up there you, mm -hmm. you drew, who are the characters that are on? on oh, I think you on recognize there. one of them. I yeah, think you well, I recognize that. a couple of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is that, is that Epic? Uh-huh, Epic. Up top. Yeah, uh -huh. And uh, who's that on the right? Uh, that's the little girl from, uh, well, I have your, your, your dragon over there. Yeah, what, what that's do Blaze from Dear, I try Dear to make dragon. sure we represent everybody up yeah. there. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, so uh, when, when I talk, suggest, what I suggest people do when they are um, writing, Mm -hmm. Like you said, having fun yeah. is, that's actually number three. If you want to mm -hmm. be a writer and you want to be an author, there's three things you need. One, you need to know the alphabet. Does anyone oh. know the alphabet? A few people? Okay. <laughs> number two, you need to know how to tell a good story. Oh, and yeah. the best way to learn how to tell a good story is to read a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. And the third thing to do is just sit down and have fun mm -hmm. writing and drawing mm -hmm. those stories. Yeah. And that's it. That's all you need if you want to be an author. Is, there you go. Is, uh, you know, most important thing is have fun. Yeah. So I about. think now we are going to do a little uh, drawing exercise. And oh. I want to invite Parker and Jessica to come back up on the stage. Uh -huh. And um, if, I think we're going to hand out some, uh, some notebooks, unless that people, people have them already. And we're going to, um, oh, excellent. We're gonna do a little a little drawing with Frank. You can scoot over closer so you can see. Not that far. Yeah, right there. 
So while we're uh, while we're getting settled, um, yeah. A, B, I think C. Frank. What's up? Yeah. What's up? Uh -huh. Huh? So we're gonna talk about. Uh, I guess draw whatever you want, but uh, um, we were gonna say what brings. What brings you joy, Frank? <laughs> All right, maybe once you have your notebook and pencil. Well, once you, uh, once. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, thank okay, you. so I think. Did you guys get your sketch? Do you have your sketch? Do you have your sketch pads? Are you guys ready? All right. Are if everyone's ready? ready, we're gonna need. Uh, there we go. So Frank, what uh, what brings you joy, Frank? What brings me joy? If, if everyone could be quiet for a sec. We're gonna let Frank get started. So Frank, what brings you joy? What, what brings you me joy? What brings me joy? Family, uh, art, the faces of the children when they read my stories or read stories in general. Uh, the, this, I'm corny, so books, believe it or not, <laughs> I love books as well. Yeah. Libraries. Libra Libraries bring me joy. Yeah. yeah. Libraries bring you joy, don't they? Yeah. What, what, what brings you joy, Parker? I like libraries too. What else brings you joy? Uh, designing dresses. Designing dresses. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. What All about right. dancing? You like dancing to you. Yeah. So, so Frank, mm -hmm. do you want to draw something that brings you joy? Is that Let's what we're see. doing? Well, back in the day, back in the 80s, what brought us joy was if you had one of these things. I don't know if you guys had these back in the day. Let's see. I don't know if you guys had this back in the day. You guys may not know what this is. Is it Garbage Pail Kids? Uh-huh. No, I think it's a boom box. There you go. There it's you a go. boom box. There you go. They don't know what boom boxes yeah. are. Yeah, so if you had one of these, if you had one of these back in the day. Oh, I know what boom boxes are. You know what a boom box is? There you go. What is a, what's a boom box? What comes out of a boom box? Music. Music. Music, Music. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you had one of these back in the day, oh, that brought you a lot of joy. That brought you a lot of joy. And it, so that was, that was one of the things. But you know, I'm an 80s guy, you know, I'm an 80s baby, yeah. <laughs> so what, so designing dresses, could you, could you design a dress for us? Okay. Yeah, you gonna, wow. Now, I don't know. So how Should, long is, how long is she, how long have you been designing dresses? Uh, well, a few months now. She said a few months now. A few, a few months. months. Wow. Okay, cool. What did you do before that? I was in dance class. She said I was in dance class. Oh, dance class. in dance class. All right. So um, I was wondering if everyone here in the audience wants to draw what brings them joy. Yeah. Take, cool. a, take cool. a minute to draw something that brings you joy. And, Definitely. Uh, Definitely. Anything, right? Yeah, anything. Anything that brings you joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Parker really likes drawing dresses and outfits, they bring her joy because she likes to add all the intricate details, uh -huh. you know, and accentuate the different textures of oh, fabrics wow. and stuff. Wow. She's gifted. So could you draw a library? How would a, a library? library work? Yeah, what would that look like? A library. Libraries now, are, look so different these days, right? They're so futuristic. And, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm thinking. I'm thinking if I'm going to, if there's a futuristic library, right? A futuristic library. Let's say, for instance, if I was going to see a library in the year 2000 and, let's say, 2089, this Ooh. is what I think a, a library would look like, library. right? Yeah. All right. 
And while Frank's drawn, feel free to, well, I'm mesmerized by, by him, but feel free to, uh, to draw what brings you joy on your notebooks. This is what I'm thinking a library would look like in the future. I'm thinking a library would just be able to float to you if you need it, and you have the city, and you just be, and it just, you could just Google it, and it just come to you. It just comes to you. Right? It just fly, just 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 fly to right you. to your house. Just fly right to your house. You're like, series that need a library. So it's like it's like a drone library. There you go, a drone, and just <laughs> drop off the books and make it happen for you. There you go. There we go, a floating library. Are there any statues outside? Because I know outside of this library, there's a bunch of statues. Statues? Yeah, you, mm. you know, maybe there's like a statue of something on the side. Statue of something. Maybe the Statue of Liberty. Maybe we're in New York. The Statue oh, okay, of Liberty okay. is right here. No, like on the steps, like a lion statue. Oh, the sta on the yeah, steps? Yeah, yeah something yeah, like maybe, that. Maybe we put one on here. All right. A couple of statues, maybe a lion right here. There we go. There we go. Has anybody been to a library before? Okay. Oh, we are in one. That's true, yeah. Oh, you're funny. <laughs> we are in one. There we go. There we go. Well, it's not the best statues, but you're there. <laughs> you're there. All yeah. right. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Mm -hmm. nice. That's fantastic. <laughs> I like right. the floating library. Thank you. Thank you. Thank like so, me too. Um, Parker, did you have any uh, any requests of things you think Frank might might be good at drawing, um, or did you want to share what you have? I'm ready to share what I have. Um, yeah. You what? Ready to share? Ooh. Wow! 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 That's nice. Uh, good job. I wonder. I wonder if if she would want to go and draw something with Frank. What do, do you, you think? want to go draw something with Frank yeah. over there? Frank, yeah. do, you think Here, the two of you, do you think the two of you could collaborate on a, on a drawing, yeah. perhaps? Sure. Would you be willing to do that? Sure. All right. So do you want to maybe put one of, uh, one of your dresses, and then Frank can, can uh, where, yeah. where, where, where should your dress be? And you got to make it big, so you got all that space up there. Yeah. Okay. Well, as tall as you can yeah. reach. Yeah. As high as you can there reach. There you go. So you were talking earlier about learning uh -huh. all the different places. Like you could be in a room like this. You uh -huh. could be inside a refrigerator. You mm -hmm. could be, you know, uh, <laughs> on, in the ocean. You could be in lots of different places. Yes. So, yeah. So what, what location will this dress be in? Is it on a pirate ship? Is it on, you know, where, where, wow. where should this dress be? Wow. That would be dope. A pirate She's ship. Busy Let me see. Drawing it. So. Me, if it's going to be on a pirate ship, right? Right. Let's run with that. So I'm going to start it. I'm going to go from here. I'm going to bring it over here. And I'm going to bring it from here to here. I'll bring it down. Bring it over here. And I'm going to get people put to some share. waves. Get people to share. Sorry, I'm going right around you. Sorry. That's a nice teamwork, Some though. waves in there. You can now, keep going. I don't know. We're going to go up here. I got to leave room for you, young lady. There you go. Hand okay. of yours. All right. I'll put this over here. And it's going to sail over here. I see you changed um, writing utensils, Parker. Why'd you, you do that? There you go. Oh, well, she's Let's busy drawing, focus. very yeah. focused. Sail. Gotta make sure they both sign. another sail. Yeah. Yeah. Let's bring this up over here. Yo, that is very nice. Go ahead, girl. Go ahead. All right. So how long have you been drawing? Um, for a while. 
Really? Do you like drawing? Yeah. Maybe one day you'll be illustrating your own books. Isn't that, you'll be an author illustrator. That is amazing. Wow, I like those X's. Those, go ahead, girl. <laughs> All right. So we have the pirate ship. Well, pirate ship, we got to have a little right there. So is this a dress for a pirate captain? Yeah, who's oh. the dress for? Put some. Josh asked if it was maybe for a pirate captain. Yeah, maybe for. All right. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. We have to have the skull. Wow. So does anybody, while they're finishing up, there might be, a, is there anybody in the audience that may want to share what they've got? I think we have a microphone. Oh, um, oh keep going, keep going. It, okay. I'm sure whatever they drew is way better like than mine. Well, I, my, this, is, this is my library if you want to. We said joy, so I just drew my yeah, kids. Here, let's put, we can put our, not, your kids with my library. Not, not so good, but they bring me joy, yeah. so. <laughs> Oh, it looks like we have a volunteer over here. Go right ahead. What did you draw? Yes. Um, so I also drew a basketball. I want to be a future basketball player. A basketball player. Can you hold it up so we can see? Nice. Awesome. Nice. Very cool. All right. And we have somebody over on the right side. Oh. Oh. Wait, can they hear me? Okay. I drew palm trees because, like, the breeze in where, like, in Orlando or Florida or something like that. Or even there's California. Of, there's a lot of palm trees, and, like, I like to see them, like, you know, like. Yeah, that's awesome. cool. Awesome. Yeah, can you hold it up? Oh. Nice. Awesome. Nice. Woo. All right. Yeah. I think somebody up there? Hi, I'm Jaden, and... The stuff I drew was my favorite video game, Fortnite, and the currency in that game, V-Bucks, and my favorite drink is Mug Root Beer, and my favorite food is a hot dog. Awesome. Cool. Oh, Can we see good. it? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's great. Just, just like... You. Nice work, nice work. Just, just like Frank said, you know, yeah. drawing the characters that already exist, that's a great, a great way to go. Down here too. Wow. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Look at you. What I drew is that everybody makes me brings me joy because I feel like everyone loves me for who I am. Aww. Wow. That's cute. And you... everybody is kind to me, and I. Well, that sounds fantastic. Can you hold yeah. it up for us? Huh? Can, Can you hold it, it up? Oh, So nice. I think that's, that's a perfect one to end on. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh, we have one more. One last one. Okay, go ahead. Let me go right here. No? I can speak for you. So this is Kevin, and he drew a train. And I've been told that he's a very, very great drawer. Do you want to show everyone? Yeah. Can we see It's it? really good. Oh, wow. Nice. Fantastic. That's an awesome nice. train. Cool. Wow. It looks like we have some extremely talented artists in this room. So I think now we're going to, if you guys want to head Back down? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, she's still working. But oh, she's getting it. She's All right. She still got some things right, going. Still work. Well, we're gonna take yeah. some some Q and A for a minute. Um, and if anybody has questions, um, feel free to ask questions to me and Frank or Jessica. We're all here. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure I, who's got mics? microphones. Are there mics? I'm yeah. going to let you microphone people call on wow. people. Okay. So this one is for Mr. Frank. What's up? Um, I have a question. Did you usually play Call of Duty? Call of Duty? Yes. No, no, I never played Call of Duty. <laughs> oh, all right. 
That's a good question. That's a good question. What? Well, I have a follow-up for that. Do you play any video games at all? Yeah, I was going to I don't know. You're not a video game no, player. No, I used to play. Okay. I used to play. Um, Nintendo. Yeah, Nintendo. I used to play. Yeah. Mario. Pac-Man, yeah. Mario. Mario. That, yeah, back in the day. I'm. Yeah. I'm really into Animal Crossing right now. I gotta really? say. But you know what? I'll tell you one cool thing about video games, is that. The best video games have good characters mm. with good stories. Yeah. And those stories have to be written by by storytellers, yes. right? and the characters have to be designed by animators, by artists and mm -hmm. animators, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And in fact, I have some, some of the illustrators that have worked on some of my books, uh, one of them right now is, is a character designer for video games. Wow. That is his day job. Jeez. And uh, he does picture books, like I write picture books on mm -hmm. the evenings and weekends, mm -hmm. that he, he, he illustrates them. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so designing video game characters is a job that people have, is a job that artists have. So keep working on your art and that could be your job someday. Yeah. Yeah. All right, how about up here? How did you guys get great artists? What was the question? How did you get great artists? How did I Oh, I practice. I have a painting called Practice Makes per Perfect. Um, art is just repetition. You do it over and over again. It's, um, you just draw it and draw and draw and you just, you know, so you don't, you have a lot of confidence in your work and, and you just continue to draw and then you get better and better every time. Does, does anybody play any sports or play any instruments? Okay, mm. so, so drawing and writing they're a lot like playing a sport or playing an instrument. The more you practice, the better you're going to get. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't just be like, hey, here's a violin. Go have a concert. Yeah. No, you, yeah. Have, to, yeah. you have to take lessons. Then you have to practice. practice. And, and eventually, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll get to the point where you can yeah. have a recital or a concert or you're playing a basketball game. But yeah. it takes practice to mm -hmm. become a good artist. So just yeah. keep doing it. And eventually, mm -hmm. someday, you'll be better than Frank. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, right? <laughs> Hi, my name is Jonathan, and what kept you motivated when you were writing and drawing? Um, you can say the writing part. What well, motivates you to write? Well, when, to, when getting a lot of rejections, you mean? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, I think that when I'm writing stories and telling stories, I, I'm having fun telling stories for myself. I'm making myself laugh. I'm cracking myself up. I, I write things that, that are, you know, kind of generate any kind of emotion, whether it's making people laugh or making mm -hmm. people grossed out. Um, I have this one poem about my cat that poops all over the house. Yeah. And it's, it's never going to be a book, but that's okay. Um, it, I, it, I wrote it to, to make myself laugh, to, to gross out my wife. It totally works, by the way. Um, and, and so as long as you're having fun doing what you're doing, then eventually it'll come together, I think. You have to believe in yourself. And, and you know what? If it doesn't end up working out, at least you're having fun doing what you're doing. So try to have fun with it. And mm -hmm. someday other people if, will probably like it too. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what kept me motivated, at least with writing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know, did you well, have anything to add? Well, for me, yeah. you know, our stories and our books are about Parker and my other children. So I'm motivated all the time because uh -huh. they're the ones who inspire me to, to write our stories. Yeah. Family. Yeah, right, definitely. family. Definitely. Yeah. They bring me joy. So it's easy to write about it's them and easy. tell their stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I'm, when I'm painting, uh, I paint a lot of children. And it's basically like how I see Parker here drawing right now. I could literally see that as a painting. And, um, and so I just, I'm inspired by everyone around me, basically, how you guys look right now, the audience, and the hand raised and things like that. I see paintings when I look at you guys. And so what inspires me when, when things aren't going well is I have a style that I work in that's an easy style that I can accomplish. So I'll draw like maybe a stick figure or something like that. And I have it running. And then I'm like, oh, wait, that looks pretty cool. And it gives me my motivation to keep drawing other images. I agree with something you said, though. Also, you know, mm -hmm. what also inspires me to keep writing our stories is the fact that we're inspiring other kids. Oh, yes. You know, yes. that's a big yes. part of it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Good question. What's yours? Go ahead. Oh, over here. Uh, 
We have a question for Parker over here. Hi, my name is Hope, and my question for Parker is, how many dresses have you drew? Ooh. What? How many dresses have you drawn? Dresses, uh, too many to count. Too many to count. <laughs> 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 now we have a question. Hi, my name is Mia, and my question is for both of you. Okay. When you messed up, why didn't you give up? Oh. Well, I think that making mistakes is something that you can always learn from. Uh-huh. Um, and I don't know. I don't know if I feel like it's messed up so much as there's room for improvement. Yeah. So sometimes when I write a story and I share it with someone and they tell me, it's okay, it's not your best, but it'll, it might give me some inspiration for where I can maybe make it better or where I can make the next one better. Mm -hmm. um, really, I love making mistakes. Yeah. I love making mistakes because it gives me a chance to learn from them. Um, so every painting I do isn't perfect. Every drawing isn't is either. But you learn from each experience. You get better and better each time. Um, so I look forward to happy mistakes. Yeah, Jessica? Same thing you guys said. Yeah. I mistakes actually, are an opportunity to learn. And sometimes a mistake actually can give you a new idea for something else. I have a book that's coming out later this year. It's called My Pet Feet. Mm -hmm. You heard that right. <laughs> and uh -huh. it's, it actually is about a little girl who uh, wakes up one day and the letter R has disappeared. <laughs> and her pet ferret, if you know uh -oh. how to spell ferret, it's F-E-R-R-E-T. But uh -huh. the, the R's are gone, so her pet ferret has turned into pet feet. And uh -huh. I got the idea for this book because I made a typo on my phone. I wrote the word fiend instead of friend. So if you know mm -hmm. how to say friend, if you take the R away, it becomes fiend. And I thought, whoa, what happened to the R? And I thought, what, why would the R disappear? Why would a friend become <laughs> a fiend? What would happen if all the rest of the R's in the world disappeared? And then that all spiraled into a book that I wrote with only 25 letters in the alphabet. And That's all these cool. visual, get yeah, exactly. That's so so cool. sometimes a mistake is not just a mistake, it's actually an opportunity yeah. to do something even better. And Definitely. sometimes when you see something as a mistake, if mm -hmm. you share it with someone else, mm -hmm. they might think that it's brilliant. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, except for your editors. <laughs> except for your editors, <laughs> right. <laughs> So, my name is Raheem Boyd, and I'm a start the fourth grade. Uh, my question is, what's your favorite Nickelodeon character? Wow. Oof, there's a lot to choose from. Yeah, you already man. mentioned Doug. Is that your favorite? Yeah, favorite? Doug, was, Doug, was one of, Doug was up there. Um, I don't know if I know the new ones, though. Come on. You know, but I love this. So many, there's so many, it's kind of hard to choose. Um, I love... Actually, what is the name of that one with the with the guy? Um, uh, so <laughs> he wears the blue and white, and he has that hood on all the time, and he runs around with a yellow guy, and he looks similar to this right here. Oh yeah, Adventure Time. What is his name? Huh? Adventure Time. Adventure. I don't know why I like Adventure Time so much, but I really like. But my favorite character, believe it or not, right now is Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig. Pig, Peppa Pig. Yeah. <laughs> Peppa Pig really? Peppa Pig. I love that yeah. show. I don't know my, why. <laughs> I, I, my favorite Nickelodeon character is, uh, I don't know if you guys know what Rugrats is. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Rugrats. Do you guys? Yes. Susie? Do you remember Susie? Yes. Little brown girl? Yeah. yeah I was all about Susie. Yeah. My, I love Susie. my wife does the best Chucky impression when she's all <laughs> stuffed up as a cold. Bobby. <laughs> Bobby. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Parker, do you have a favorite Nickelodeon character? Uh, SpongeBob. SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we should end it with that. Yeah. Right there. We will end it on SpongeBob. I'm done. Wait, um, before you have to sign it. Before we stop, though, are you going to be able to sign it? I think that yeah, um, Parker. Sure. Yeah, well. Parker, right. you got to make sure you sign that. There you go. Yeah, Parker, you got to sign that. You got to put sign your name it. on there. And, and everyone it. should be should should probably sign their art too. 
Um, I'll put mine down here. Yeah, it's really important you put your signature on yeah, your Yeah, someday artwork. it could be worth something. Could be worth millions one day. Or or more, you know, <laughs> in the 2089 and library. Great penmanship. Look so. at that penmanship. Look at you, girl. What is that, hearts? All right, well. You have hearts in your name? Thank Look you. Look at all that. Are those diamonds? Yeah, well, thank you all so much. Um, I'm going <laughs> to turn it over to. Oh, if you guys want to come you down. Go. All right. Parker. Mm. Oh, she have to sign it? Hello? Okay. Oh, so do you have any, any last thoughts you want to share uh, with everybody here? Um, you know, it's, it's about Kick Push. Let's talk about this, this Yeah, story. let's talk about Kick Push. Because like, I love your story. The yeah. Was right. Oh, that was great. I think, um, I think what I want everyone to realize is that you don't have to be the best in the class at what the... You know, you don't have to be like, if everyone's playing basketball, you don't have to be the best basketball player if that's not your thing. If everybody's playing soccer, I don't know what you guys' sports are, but um, you don't have to, just because one guy is shining or one girl is shining doesn't mean that you're insignificant. And I just want everyone to know what, what the picture book world is that, in my books, is that you don't have to be, just because everybody else is good at that one thing, you don't have to follow that direction and, you know, like I did. I wanted to be a skateboarder and I fell down hills and I, I have another story, I went up a half pipe. And um, I realized that, you know, you have to be trained to do that. And um, Did you and go up the half or you just go down? I, well, a lot of times I don't remember what happens at the end of my stunts because I You did black not, out? Yeah. <laughs> but what happened at this particular time, after I, you know, was, you know my kids weren't there this time. And I, I decided I was going to go to the skate park. It was an indoor skate park. And I saw this wall that went up and down. I was like, well, what are you guys doing at? And they were like, we go on the board and we ride. It's a half bike. I said, well, let me try that. Now, they made me fill out a lot of forms, and I didn't know why. <laughs> I'm like, okay, sure. And they gave me the board, and everyone came out of the office. Like, I was like, a, like, I was like well, they must know who I am. They must know how to illustrate. They must want to autograph or something. Everybody came out. The crowd was there. And I was like, well, go. What's up? And they're like, well, go ahead. They said, just lean forward. And I did that. And I slid, and I went up. I went down without the board, and I kept going up and down without the board until I finally, it's crazy. I don't know how these kids do it, but I'm not Tony Hawk, so I'm not trying to be Tony Hawk. So I can appreciate what he does and be an artist, you know? I can be frank. All right. Yeah, well, I will say that if you want to be uh, an artist like Frank or you want to be a writer, just have fun with it and keep practicing. And that's, that's what it is, because people yeah. see it. Yeah. If, you're, if you don't like animals and you're drawing, you know, dogs always doing things that are like, oh, you're like, well, you can't, oh, you must not really like dogs. But if you like dragons and you draw dragons on the people, people will really see the love you have in dragons. Yeah. You know, people really see what you, what you like to do really shines through. So whatever it is, you could be happy in who you are. Yeah, as if it brings you joy, and that's why we're here, for joy and illustration. Yes, definitely, so, definitely. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. Let's give a big, warm round of applause to our special guests. Thank you. Thank you to Josh Funk, Frank Morrison. Thank you so much. Jessica and Parker Curry, thank you so much. Thank you. Also, can we please give a big, warm thanks to the Eskin family for making this program possible. Great. And we also should thank the Eskins, the Curry family, Bloomsbury, and Simon and & Schuster. They're the ones who allowed you to take all those wonderful books back to school today. So let's thank them, too. And I want to thank you for coming today. My name is Lauren Wyndham Rosak. I'm the manager of Family and Youth Programs here. And on behalf of all of us, we thank you for coming to the Library of Congress. We hope you will come back soon. Come back for a program. Come back and explore this collection. Come back as researchers. We want to see you again.